Hello and welcome to the first video in this series for beginners looking at linked lists in C. So this series then is aimed at somebody really sort of starting out with C but knows the basics. So you know how to compile and run a program in C, you understand the program on the screen here, you've had maybe a look at pointers, hopefully you've had maybe a look at a, a structure, a data structure in C, you know how to write functions, basic functions anyway, and now you've come across linked lists and the situation gets very confusing and this is very common as well because when you first see them, uh, the question of why in the world are we using these often comes up and also they can be rather confusing to start, start putting together, but they are really, really powerful and they're a real core concept of, um, of software development, particularly in C. So what I'd like to do over the next few videos then is explain all about how linked lists worked. And we're going to start off with something known as singly linked lists. In this video, what I'd like to do is actually not make a link between anything, but we need to do a little bit of setup with our data structures and things like that. So a linked list then, what is it? Or in this case, a singly linked list. Well, I have here on the screen A, B, C and D. That's a list items or boxes in this case, and they are all linked by the arrows between them. A is linked to B, B is linked to C and C is linked to D. And the arrow is going in one direction. So there's a single link. That's A has an arrow pointing to B and B has an arrow pointing to C and so on. There's nothing pointing back in the other direction. That will be a double link. And we'll look at those later on in the series. Here we have a single link between these items. And that's our list, that's our singly linked list. Uh, we have a start, which is an A, and an end, D. The way that's put together is the blocks that we have here of A, B, C, and D are actually data structures. So typically in C, a struct would be used for that. Now that could be a structure just with one integer in it, but it could also obviously be a structure with lots and lots and lots of other information inside. And as well as these data structures, between the data structures, what we have are so-called links, which link our data structures on our list together. And the important thing to know is these lists are what is known as dynamic. So when I start building my list, when I start my program, I have nothing in my list. And then I create a new data structure. In this case, it's A. And I create that dynamically. I create the memory for it. And then I set the values, it might be the name of someone or the age or something like this. And then A exists in the memory. It's been dynamically allocated and it exists. Then I add a new data structure, this time B. Again, I allocate the memory for this and then I link A to B. And then I add something else, this time C. So I dynamically allocate a third piece of memory for another data structure and I link B then to C. And then D again, a fourth data structure, I allocate a fourth piece of memory for this data structure and I link this then to C. And I do what's called dynamic allocation of memory each time. I only allocate the memory as I need the memory. And when I've allocated it, then I link it somehow to the last data structure on my list. And this is what's known as building my singly linked list. The question often arises when you start first start programming in C is why in the world do we want to do this? Uh, we have things like, for example, arrays, where we can just uh, allocate an array of a few hundred data structures and fill those as we need. And certainly that's true. You can, in many cases, make an array, for example, of structures and just fill out the array. But linked lists can be very, very powerful. One of the really powerful things with linked lists is the memory alloc is allocated dynamically. So the list is able to grow and shrink and only use the memory which your program requires. Now, if you're only using a few hundred small data structures these days with computing power and RAM, etc., it's not going to be much. But if you're writing, say, a neural network or something in C, where you may be allocating hundreds and hundreds of thousands of data structures, it's very good to be able to use dynamic memory there. So only use the memory that you require and maintain lists that grow and shrink. The other advantage of linked lists is they can be extremely quick. So these links, as we'll see throughout the series, between the data structures, between the A, B, C and D, the arrows there are pointers to where the data structures exist in the memory. So the data structures remain static where they've been allocated in the memory. And we use pointers to these areas in the memory to manipulate the order of our list. In other words, when we want to do some changing of order or insert at the beginning or at the end or in the middle or something like this, we just switch around references to memory addresses rather than copying and replacing 
data structures in the memory and it ends up very very fast and if you need high performance particularly when manipulating hundreds of thousands of data structures it's much much quicker often than it is switching and copying things around inside an array or something like that so particularly for performance they're extremely powerful i tried to think of an example where i've actually used linked list quite a bit myself and one of the examples i came up with um i had a game many years ago now on the the app store and on the play store it's no longer there it's just a silly experiment, a traffic management game. You can see the beautiful graphics on the screen here. But this worked using doubly linked lists. So they weren't singly linked, they were doubly linked. But the way it was is you can see that the roads going vertically and horizontally on the screen. The cars that were going either up or down or across on the road were all part of a linked list. So on the right hand side, there's a, a motorbike and two cars. The way they existed inside the game was actually a linked list. So they were all linked together. They were aware of who was in front of them, who was behind them, and what their speed was, and whether they were stopped to the light or moving. And then when they turned off and went onto another road, they would join a linked list on that road and slot into the traffic there. So what do we need to do then in this video to prepare ourselves to get going with linked lists? Well, we need to define our data structure, our A, our B, our C, our D, which will be called S person. Uh, we'll need to write ourselves a function that allocates the memory for a new data structure. We're going to write a function to print uh, this person structure to the screen, also with its memory address. And then what we'll do is we'll create two person data structures and print their memory addresses to the screen. And then in the next video, we'll link those up. But we'll just make a start, make a start with getting some of the code done in this one. So how the code is going to look then is, first of all, we'll make our structure like this. Again, uh, the series is aimed at beginners, so I'm going to try and go really, really slowly through this here. So we'll make a new struct, s person. It'll have one property in it, and that is uh, an integer, and that's an age. And we can see this represented on the left by just a box in the slide here, which I'll be using in future slides. And that's the equivalent of what we see on the right-hand side here, which is just our struct, s person, int, age there. And what we're going to be building in the next few videos is a linked list where we link a number of these S person structures together. The thing we want to do in this video is we want to make and allocate a new person structure. So the way we'll do this then in C is the first thing we'll do is we'll make a new pointer, a pointer to point to a person structure and it'll be pointing to null, so nowhere in the memory. What we'll then do is we'll use malloc, which is a dynamic memory allocation, where we give the size in bytes of the amount of memory that we want and malloc then returns a pointer to the start of the allocated memory and we'll assign our new person pointer to this pointer that's returned by malloc in other words new person will be pointing to the area memory that's been allocated by malloc for our new person what we'll then do is we'll use printf and the percentage p and i thank someone in the comments in my previous playlist on uh, linked list for pointing this out um, to actually print the address of the pointer. And what that will do, that will show us the actual uh, hex address in the memory of where this particular piece of memory has been allocated. And we'll be using this a lot throughout the series to double check how things are all linked together with memory addresses. So what we get at the end of all this code above then is we get a person structure with an age integer and at a certain address in the memory. And it's this address that's the key to the linked lists. How this looks then inside a function in C is we have a, we return then a pointer to our uh, uh, S person structure. We take in as an argument the age that we want to assign as the value for our structure. So we make our pointer, we allocate and assign our pointer to the newly allocated memory. Then I assign the We've now got our memory, so I can assign the age to the age integer of our person, print where it's been created in the memory, and then return the pointer to this block of memory we've created for this person to whatever has called this function. In the actual program itself, then in main, what we'll do is we'll start off by creating two pointers, one first and one second, both setting them to null and their person pointers, and then each of those will be set to point to a place in the memory where we'll point them to the pointer returned by our get new person function. In other words, first we'll point to an allocated person structure with the age 125, and second we'll point to an allocated person structure with the age 100. And the output of our program will then be to 
print the address of first and second, which will be null. Then we'll create two new people, as you can see here, one at 980, one at 520, the last three numbers of the address. And then as confirmation, we'll print where the first pointer is pointing to. It's pointing in this case to the person at 980, and second is pointing to the address of the person at 520. And in the following video, what we'll do is we'll look at how we can link those together to start making our linked list. So just to finish off, now I've gone on a long time, but I really hope um, the explanation is relatively clear of how we start setting things up. We can go into actually making the code. Now the code is on GitHub. Um, you can clone it and, and fork it, do whatever you like really with it. Um, so I'm going to do some copy and pasting in here just not to take forever with this because the code we've just seen on the slide is relatively simple. But we're going to make our a uh, structure, uh, sorry, our person structure with our age integer inside here. And you've just seen the code on the slides there. Let's drop in our get new person function here then, where we create our new person, allocate our memory, set the age according to the argument that's come in here, print then to the screen our new person and return the pointer to our newly allocated memory. What I would like to do is create a function that prints the details of a person to the screen. And to do this, I have here a couple of arguments. One is going to be the actual person that we want to print. And the other one for now, maybe we'll remove it later on, but we'll also have a comment so we can identify with some details when we need them, the person that we're printing. Now we do have to ask ourselves before we actually try accessing any information for the person that we've been told to print, is, is that reference that's sent in here in the memory address, is it actually an address in the memory or is it null? Because if it's null, then we're asking to uh, print something that's null. In other words, we can't, there's nothing here that exists. So we'll put a check in to say, is the person null? If it is, then we'll just say the comment is null so that we know that um, we've tried to print a null pointer, let's say. Otherwise, we can get on with trying to print our person. And to do this, very, very simple printf statement. We'll just put the comment, a colon, the age, percentage d for the integer, and then here the address of where our person is inside the memory. I'm just going to compile and run this on the right hand side of the screen to make sure there are no silly errors. There don't seem to be. I've got start and the prompt. And now into main itself then. The first thing to do is to assign, create and assign two pointers to null. And I'll call those first and second. So first is null and second is null. And we can print those addresses then or print these people already to the screen. Now they're both null. So when we call the print person function, person is null. So we should get here first is null and we should get second is null printed to the screen because both of those are null. So I'm just going to compile and run this and we can see that first is null and second is null. And what I'd like to do now then is make use of the get new person function that we have here to actually assign the first and second pointers to some newly allocated memory for a person structure. The first one we'll do with an age of 125 and the second one we'll do with an age of 100. And now we can just copy, it's a bit ugly, but copy and paste this code again to print first and second. And now we can have a look at what we have inside the program. So we have our first is null and our second is null from the first two prints here on line 41 and 42. And now we've called the get new person and the get new person. The first person was created at 00751980. And the first pointer was set to point to the memory that was allocated for this person. The second one was created with an age 100. And the address here is ending in 520, 520. So when we print them to the screen, then we can see that indeed first is at the address of 980. So first is pointing to the address of the first person that was created to us. And we can see likewise that second age 100 is pointing to the address of 520. And that actually completes the code we need for this video. I just want to do one tiny more thing. We don't need it actually here because when the program finishes, any memory that was allocated in our program will be uh, deleted now, will be set free to be used by other programs. But you should be very wary when you're dynamically allocating memory that you clean up after yourself. So when you don't need memory anymore, you should always free that memory. And you should always make sure that any pointers that are pointing to that memory are set back to null. Otherwise, memory will be freed, but they will still be pointing at that particular address in the memory. And that could be used by another program or something. And you can get big, big problems when you try then to access that, uh, that memory. 
So the way to free the memory is to call the free function um, and send us an argument which uh, pointer we actually want to free. So the memory that for allocated memory that first is pointing to will be freed and the second for and the same for second. And then last but not least, what we can do is we can set first and second equal to null. So both of those pointers are no longer pointing somewhere erroneous in the memory. They're not pointing to anything and we can leave those. OK, then, so that completes this video. It's quite a long introduction, but I hope it's clear. Uh, I hope how linked lists work is clear as well. And in the next video, then we'll have a look at actually linking these two data structures we've created together. So thanks very much for watching. Comments, questions, criticisms, welcome, as always, on YouTube. See you in the next one.